Oh, shoot! I need to get home to do my Fear the Fears review. <laughs> Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review The Fate of the Furious. So The Fate of the Furious is about when Dominic Toretto does turn on his team. He officially goes rogue because of Charlize Theron. So with Dom now working with Charlize Theron, it's up to the team to stop Charlize Theron and see if maybe Dom is as bad as he is presented to be. So The Fate of the Furious is a film I was very excited for. I did have a little bit of worry if you guys saw my trailer review because I wasn't really a fan of the concept of Dom all of a sudden turning on his family but then I gave it more thought after watching the trailer and I realized that there's no way Dom can all of a sudden turn evil. There has to be a reason. I was really hoping going into Fate of the Furious, as excited as I was, I was really hoping they would give a believable reason for why Dom all of a sudden goes rogue. Does it do a believable job of doing that? I'll mention that in a sec, but first thing I will definitely say is this. This film absolutely delivers on the over-the-top action sequences to go along with some very cheesy one-liners. And, of course, plenty of heart. They do, you know, bring up the whole family thing where family sticks together. No one should ever turn their back on family. Of course, that is still present. That's something I know a lot of people like to make fun of because they bring up family a lot. But, yes, family is brought up a lot in this film too and of course it's not a fast and furious film at this point unless we get a message about how important family is everyone honestly does a terrific job here of course there's a huge cast there's only so much you can say but of course Dwayne Johnson as Hobbs, he's terrific here, and it's nice to see him actually fully back because one of my issues with Furious 7 was how underused Hobbs was. The majority of Furious 7 not having Hobbs was quite underwhelming to me because Hobbs was such a great character, and to see him not be in Furious 7 that much, it honestly was like a bummer. But it's nice to see him actually fully present. Of course, it's nice to see Jason Statham as Decker. Shaw now working with this team and all say for him is where they take his character I found to be very interesting and he's actually very likable in fact I'd say Deckard Shaw is actually one of the best parts of this film especially with the specific action sequence that deals with Jason Statham and a baby that was really funny really entertaining and Jason Statham just shows that he's truly a badass so Deckard Shaw I actually really liked him here in fact better than Furious 7 because one of my issues with Furious 7 is that Although he was an interesting villain, he just went in and out with the team. But here, he's actually more present, like with Hobbs. Kurt Russell as Mr. Nobody, of course, he's terrific. Michelle Rodriguez is always very good with these films. She does do a very good job. Ludacris is also very entertained here. He's really good. Tyrese Gibson has some funny moments here. He's really good in this film. He's always a joy to watch with these movies. Scott Eastwood, who is being trained by Kurt Russell's character, Mr. Nobody, to basically get more of an idea of how this organization works. I actually liked his character. As the film went along, I actually started to really like his character more, and I started to to find him more interesting. Charlize Theron, I have to say, was really great in this film. Like, she was actually really, really believable. Like, you could tell she put her 100% into her performance as this cyber terrorist. And she felt like a genuine threat to the team. Like, she actually got under my skin, to be honest. She did a terrific job as the antagonist. It's because of that, the antagonist is really believable and of course the man I had to say for last is Vin Diesel as Dominic Toretto now yes the answer is yes how this film handled the story of Dom going rogue and turning his back on his family it is completely 
understandable. It is completely convincing on why this has happened. And of course, Vin Diesel, yes, he is very good in this film. He is really, really good, actually. Especially and surprisingly, a few very dark moments. There's a few emotional moments that was actually added in The Fear the Furious that actually genuinely surprised me. I know this is known as a franchise that doesn't take itself too seriously, but honestly, there were actually a few moments in The Fear the Furious that were actually very, very very serious. And I think it's because of F. Gary Gray directing this film. That's why the dramatic moments in this film were just directed so well. Because obviously, if you see something like Straight Outta Compton, which is a phenomenal film, he did a great job handling the dramatic moments in there. The few dramatic moments you get in Friday, those were very well directed too. So it's no surprise that the dramatic scenes were very strong in The Fate of the Furious, thanks to F. Gary Gray's direction. But I have to say that Vin Diesel actually did do a very good job of not only playing your normal Dominic Toretto, but he actually did deliver on the emotional moments. And I just mentioned F. Gary Gray directing the dramatic scenes, but also the film in general. I thought he did do a very good job for the most part with the film. He was able to bring you into the action. He was able to bring you into the characters, the chaos that just happens throughout this film. How he was able to direct these scenes were honestly very impressive. And I thought F. Gary Gray was definitely the right choice to direct The Fate of the Furious. The cinematography is very well shot, especially in the entire third act when they go to Russia. That is where I felt the cinematography really shine, like wow. And I did mention earlier how the film delivers on the action, but as far as how the action is filmed, for the most part, I thought it was very well executed. The entire third act, when they are in Russia, when they're on ice, that's definitely the best action sequence in this film to me personally. From the shooting, to the cars exploding, to the freaking submarine popping out of nowhere, it just gave me this huge adrenaline rush. And that's what I love about this film. It's just the adrenaline rush it gives you. And even when the film isn't focused on action because there is actually quite a bit of talking going around with the team and Kurt Russell and Scott Eastwood. I honestly did find those scenes to be very interesting. I also have to mention that Deckard Shaw and Hobbs have terrific chemistry with each other. Seriously, Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham work so well on screen. The entire jail sequence when those two are just added at each other. It was just so much fun. It was really funny too. There's a lot of funny moments when it comes to Jason Statham and Dwayne Johnson. I know I'm hearing that there's gonna be a spin-off movie focusing on those two characters. I'm absolutely down for that. I am down for that because after seeing how these two interact, I want to see a spinoff movie focusing on these two characters. And just the chemistry with the team in general. You definitely feel like they're a team. I mean, we've already followed this franchise long enough. At this point, you already feel that they are a team, that they care for each other, that they're more than just friends, but they're family. And to be honest, the twists and turns with this film were actually very well handled. While I was able to predict predict where they were gonna go with this film. I have to say the twists and turns were actually very creative and in my personal opinion I thought those twists and turns served very well for the overall storyline. Now as far as problems I do have with The Fate of the Furious I did feel like sometimes the camera would get a little bit too shaky. I was able to see what's happening on screen but I did feel like at times the camera did get a little bit too shaky during the action sequences. I thought the editing sometimes got very distracting. There were actually times where I thought the editing actually got quite choppy in the film and I thought they could have done a little bit better with some of the editing in certain parts. Sometimes the humor didn't always work. The movie is two hours and 16 minutes long and I could feel the running time maybe just a little bit. This is really more of a nitpick to be honest. It's not really a flaw. It's just maybe just a little bit 
I felt the running time. There are moments that you could predict. And I will say that in the beginning, Scott Eastwood's character did get on my nerves. I really couldn't get into his character when we get introduced to him. Luckily, his character is actually more likable. His character is actually more interesting from there. But from the moment we're introduced to Scott Eastwood's character, yeah, I was quite annoyed by him. Overall, The Fate of the Furious delivers what you want to see. Crazy action sequences that really make you question logic because man does this film really not care about logic and that's really expected of course i think this franchise knows how over the top they are at this point the cast still does a great job how they handled dom's story of turn on his family was very believable as well as a few emotional moments that were surprisingly very well executed and pretty effective and where they went with the storyline as the film was going although yes predictable it was very creative and it served for the storyline very well. F. Gary Gray's direction is great and the cinematography, especially in the third act, it looks beautiful. The Fate of the Furious is my second favorite film in this franchise now and I'm gonna give it three and a half out of four stars, which is the same rating I actually gave Fast and Furious 6. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think of The Fate of the Furious. How does it compare to these past new Fast and Furious movies for you? As far as me, I think it is better than Furious 7, which I did like. I think it's a smidge better than Fast and Furious 6, which I thought was great, but Fast 5 is still the best in the franchise for me. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have vroom, vroom, vroom. Tiger Power Family Brrr, Family Switch it up like that.